white background is going to help me to see the color change. I can start the titration for the first trial by adding the solution of sodium hydroxide, which I prepared my burette with. I filled up the burette with. I would add to um, neutralize the KHB based on the milliliter of sodium hydroxide used and the mass of KHP, I can do the calculation and find the concentration for sodium hydroxide. How to do the calculation, it will be presented in the pre-lab discussion video for this experiment. But for the actual experiment, um, record the, the initial VRET reading for trial one as zero, 0, 0.00 because the meniscus aligns exactly with the zero and start adding sodium hydroxide until a light pink color it is stable for 20 seconds so at the beginning i can add fast but when it when the pink color you see the pink color that appears and it disappears if it disappears fast, that means it's still too far uh, from the end point of the reaction or equivalence cool point. But if the life of that pink color is longer, that means the pink color appears, but it takes longer time for it to disappear. At that point, I have to be careful and I have to add one drop at a time. Especially for the first trial, I have to be careful and I have to add slowly. until the color change is stable for 20 seconds. So the life of the pink color kind of is more stable. It appears, it takes a few seconds for it to disappear. I'm going to add one drop at the time. And I'm usually, or the best practice if I'm right-handed for me is to hold the flask with my right hand and because I want con continuous stirring of the solution to make sure that the, the uh, base is reaching the acid like entirely and holding the sapo with my left hand like this position with, the, with my you know, fingers, I hold the, the, the sapo and I control it. But since I don't want to block your view from what's happening, that's why I move my hand so you could see it. And I'm trying to get you better view of the, of the experiment, what is happening. So I try to add slowly one drop at a time. And the color disappears still. So I continue adding. You have to be patient. Sometimes you are not patient with this. Then you add too much, you get too dark of a pink color. You don't know that it happened with which drop, you have to repeat the experiment, which is okay. That's why we have the optional third trial. But if the first two trials does the job, we don't have to go for the third trial that is going to save you and me time. Just adding one drop at a time now and stopping. I wash the inside of the flask often after the titration to make sure if there was any acid on the wall, it goes down and reacts with the, uh, with the base. A uh, light pink color appear is stable is stable for 20 seconds if it stays uh, 20 seconds i'm going to record the volume or final burette reading the final burette reading because this is a stable now and it's light pink color the final burette reading going to help you to read this is um, is between 30.2 and 30. Point Three, you can estimate the second decimal uh, place. 
So please record this as the final uh, BUREs reading for trial one. And we are going to start with the trial two. Uh, for the trial two, since I use 30 milliliter, I don't have enough of the sodium hydroxide in the burette. I need to refill it, but I don't have to go to zero. I can refill it to any, um, any number, as long as I make sure that I have about 30 milliliters or more in the burette. So I'm going to adjust this time at 10. The meniscus would be at 10, exactly. Okay. Record this volume as initial. So that is the initial burette reading for trial two. That is your uh, second trial, initial burette reading, 10.00 uh, for trial two initial burette reading. And they're going to start with the titration of the uh, second sample of KHP. I already know that about 30 milliliter is going to be used. So I can add the first 25 milliliter really fast. That's the good thing and the beauty about the second trial because I already did my experiment first try, so I can go fast to about from 10 to 35, then I have to be careful. The correct technique for this one is to be worried about the color change, not to be worried about the, the line or the level of the liquid in the burette, unless you're reaching this line of 50, and be below the 50, there is no graduation. You just want to make sure that you don't pass that. Otherwise, you basically um, add slowly and stir it constantly. Watch for color change. You have learned this already in 1045, but as a refresher, um, I'm explaining and I like to explain um, the right technique anytime I do experiment anyway. So I'm going to add slowly and wait for that color change staying for stable for 20 seconds. Washed inside of the flask is if there is any base or acid on the wall, it should go down. And we have a light uh, pink color. If it stays for 30, uh, 20 seconds, it's good. If not, I just add one additional drop of the base. Okay. It, it looks pink to me with the white background, but just to make sure that you could see the pink color, I'm going to add just one drop. Additional one drop, and I have the pink color visible to everyone. Now we have the volume for final burette reading is between 40.3 and 40.4. 40.3 and 40.4, and you can estimate the last digit 40.3 and 40.4. Okay, the two numbers in mass of the KHV and the volume of the sodium hydroxide, they are close to one another. We don't have to do the third trial of the experiment. So we are going to, um, we are done with the standardization of sodium hydroxide. Now I can refill the burette with sodium hydroxide, go to zero line and use it for the next part of the experiment, which is, a titration of the weak acid, which we have as acidic acid. So I'm going to take it to zero, adjust the volume at zero, exactly at 0 0.00 line. Okay. 
0 0.00 line for you to um, Okay. For titration of the weak acid, we have the acidic acid, which we are going to titrate. I need 40 milliliters of that acid. Uh, before using the burette, I already showed you before how to use the burette. But what we are going to do, we are going to insert the end of the, the I'm sorry, the pipette into pipette pump and wash it with distilled water. We wash it with distilled water. The benefit of that, first of all, we can never assume that glasswares are clean. Uh, second, if the pump is not working, like if I stop it, it will stop dripping, then I have to change the pump, make sure that the pump, pump is working. And at the same time, I need to wash the, um, the pipette to make sure that I'm starting with clean pipette. Once I wash it with the distilled water, then I would wash it with the solution I want to fill up. So I take some acidic acid, I'm going to rotate it and make sure that the inside wall of the pipette is cleaned with the acidic acid solution that I want to fill up, discard into the waste container. So I have my deionized water, I have waste container, and here is the acidic acid. It's safe. And better procedure, if you repeat this washing a couple of times to make sure that the burette is, and the pipette is clean. Same thing for burette, conditioning the burette I showed you already earlier. Now we are ready to get the um, 40 milliliters. The pipette which I'm using has, it takes only 10 milliliter. Um, it would have been nicer if they gave me like 20 milliliter pipette. So I could do just twice. Now that I have 10 milliliter, I'm going to repeat this uh, four times. And every time I fill up the, the pipette to the index line, and that's 10 milliliter, transfer to the 100 milliliter beaker, because that's what the procedure wants me to do and repeat these four times. So we, we pause the video so you don't have to watch me doing four times of this experiment. Uh, I have my, uh, my acidic acid solution in a beaker. We are using pH meter in this case to record the a pH instead of using the indicator. So I do not need acid-based indicator for this titration. We are using the pH meter. The pH meter, this cell is always in a solution, in a buffer solution to make sure that the pH meter cell stays uh, wet and the, it doesn't go out of the equilibrium. I wrap this wire around the, the burette holder because it's heavy and I don't want to drop it. It's just for the security. First, I need to calibrate. So I'm using a buffer of pH seven. So this is a buffer with the pH seven. Place the cell inside the buffer, turn on the pH meter and press on uh, standard once. So the machine recognizes that this is a pH seven because it's around pH seven. And when I press it second time, it would give me a pH of 7.0. That's basically calibrating my um, pH meter. I place the pH meter inside the beaker of the acetic acid.